This video is sponsored by Clean My Mark X. What's up, guys? Welcome back to HMHT. My name is Ben, your host, of course. And today, Apple has released WatchOS 7.5, the first beta. Now, this is not all that Apple has released. If we go on to the Apple developer website here, you can see some other updates that Apple released. So yesterday, they released macOS Pixel 11.4 beta 1. I already did a video on it. You can always check it out on the channel. And they also released iOS and also iPadOS 14.6 beta 1 and if we go down also you'll be able to see this watchOS 7.5 beta that's the video for this and they also released tvOS 14.6 beta 1 all these updates came out today only macOS came out yesterday so I'm going to be covering watchOS 7.5 beta 1 it's kind of interesting how they are releasing these updates because we actually don't even yet have watchOS 7.4 officially out but yet we have is watchOS 7.5, kind of strange, but for me on my Apple Watch Series 6 that you're seeing here, I was updating from 7.4 release candidate and the update size that I got was exactly 176 megabytes. And here on my Apple Watch, we want to see the build number. So if we go into settings and go to general and go to the about section there, you can see the new build number that we have and it's 18T, 5546F. This build number has an F at the end as you can see and in terms of stability this is highly unstable. So that's the build number that we have and now let's go on to see what are the new features and changes that came with this watchOS 7.5. The first one that I have to mention has to do with the podcast app. So this podcast application, there have been some wording changes in podcast with regards to subscriptions and these are just minor wording changes within the code it's not like changes that you can see right away with this update. So if you, for example, have like podcasts that you have subscribed to either on your iPhone or on your other Apple connected devices, you can be able to view them here on the Apple Watch podcast. And that is a subscription service that's going to be coming in future. And the next thing, the second new thing that changed with this update has to do with the home app. Also, this is not something that you'll be able to see physically. It's just mentioned within the code. So if you have a smart home device and you get a notification that someone is actually at the door, you can easily press a button and the intercom will be activated and you can use your Apple Watch as a mic and you can say, who is there or you can interact with the person but that is not yet there it's something that's just mentioned within the code also another thing that i would like to highlight it's not yet actually mentioned for watchOS 7.5 but for ios the new ios 14.6 beta it's actually mentioned that the wording has to change when you are describing the minimum supported or minimum hardware required for your applications to run so if you are developer and you make apple watch or watch os applications you might have to look more into this and perhaps in a newer beta of watchOS 7.5, perhaps beta 2 or so, they would change the wording and you would have to include that in the code with when you are developing your applications. Now, also something that's mentioned that's supported by this update in the code has to do with the wallet app and specifically Apple Pay. So if you have the Apple Pay card, you can actually set it up for family sharing, but this is a beta and it's a function that's still in transition and the full capabilities I believe will be unlocked as we go through the more betas that this watchOS 7.5 has to offer. On previous versions of watchOS, in order for you to actually even download the uh, software update, you had to connect your watch to a charger. But with this update, watchOS 7.5, and also I believe some of watchOS 7.4, you could actually even download the software. However, to install it, you had to connect your watch to a power source. Also, something else that I should mention that came to iOS 14.6 that potentially could be coming perhaps to the Apple Watch software update page has to do with the ability to actually choose a software update that you want to update to. So since my iPhone was actually already on iOS 14.5, I, if I had not yet updated to iOS 14.5, 
I could actually keep my developer beta profile and choose to either update to iOS 14.5 release candidate or go to iOS 14.6 which is beta 1. So this is something that I believe Apple can add when it comes to the Apple Watch app and when you go to software update. It, I didn't see it when I was trying to update but I believe in future it's something that they can easily add. So those are the new features and changes. When it comes to bugs or issues that I'm facing when it comes to WatchOS 7.5, I only noticed one and it has to do with the Apple Watch application. So you notice that I close the app if I open it you notice how long it actually takes to load my watch faces. Let's close that again and go to here. You can see it takes a moment to load my watch faces. And basically that's the only bug that I noticed. I know on WatchOS 7.4 it was loading quite quick. And let's try and change um, a watch face here. We'll select this one because it usually delays. And as you can see, it's actually not blacking out, which is a good thing and it responds. But that's the only bug that I noticed when it comes to WatchOS 7.5 beta 1. In terms of battery, let's go ahead and see how my battery usage is. So if we go the way it says battery, you can see when I basically connected my uh, Apple Watch to a charger when it was installing the update and since then my watch actually reached I believe about 90% and since then you can see that it's on 81% and if we go to see the battery health you can see that it's still on 96% so no change in that aspect and performance wise besides the watch faces I mean on the watch it's very easy to select the watch faces but it's just the app where you have that bug and performance wise I'm quite happy with the performance that's there there is no delay or jitter or anything like that and it's basically smooth in my opinion and whether you should update or not if you look at the build number that came with this update it will tell you everything so it has an F at the end and in terms of stability a build number with an F is not one that you should typically update to and as you can see it doesn't bring any major new features or changes so if you're going to be updating there isn't much benefit that you're going to be getting but perhaps as we progress on we'll be able to get more new features and changes now when it comes to when this update could possibly be released I'm looking perhaps towards the end of uh, May then that's when we could possibly get WatchOS 7.5 officially being released since we know that on June 7th to 11th we are going to be getting uh, new updates and exactly on June 7th that's when watchOS 8 is going to be coming so this version will be out before that and that's typically a rough estimation of when we could see watchOS 7.5 being released now other than that that's about it for me let me know whether you're going to be updating or not in the comment section below and stay safe and I'll see you in the next video very soon peace